Bruh, we just got deferminated. I still don't understand how this shoe caught such hot fire. Let's talk about it. What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to all my returning clients. Much love and appreciation as always. But if you're new here though, my name is Hayes. I'm a veterinarian and a sneakerhead, hence the name The Shoe Vet. Yes, my boy is back. Sneakers here in the building. Say hey to everybody. That's right. Today's video, we're going over one of my latest pickups from one of my personal favorite luxury brands, Rick Owens, in particular, the Rick Owens Vintage Sneaker, all right? These just dropped with their latest collection, Strobe in particular, and I will just, once again, preface this video that, I mean, these shoes were mad hard to get, especially in my size, and I'll be honest with you guys, I'm still perplexed why. Okay, let's go ahead and break down the shoe and everything that we're getting with the shoe. So with that being said, we always start with what? The presentation, i.e. the box. Hi, sir. Can you go back to your side? All right, thank you very much. So yeah, we got the Rick Owens box right here. Gray box, feel it open. And I don't know, you wanna help me open it? Is that what you're doing? Thanks. Peel open the flip open box, sizing label on the side. I got mine in EU41 per standard protocol. We'll go over sizing later on in the video. Inside the box, you get a couple different things. So you get the orange laces, two laces for two shoes, of course. And then you get your Rick Owens tote bag. I'm not gonna bring it out. If you've gotten a Rick Owens tote bag before, it's the exact same thing. No real big difference or anything. Now what you guys are primarily here for is the shoe in and of itself and here is what it looks like. As an FYI, if you are unfamiliar with these shoes, these shoes were also nicknamed the Rick Owens Van Shoes. If you can see over here, you can see the similarities between this shoe and a traditional Van Shoe, primarily with the shape and silhouette, as well as this hit of suede right here, kind of reminiscent of that little Vans wave. So yeah, Rick Owens Van Shoes, and I think a big part of that had to do with the hype, not to mention he released these vintage sneakers a long time ago too as well, and they've just been re-released, so I think a little bit of anticipation has a lot to do with it as well, all right? Now breaking down this shoe, color-wise, is primarily a bichromatic colorway, all right? You have predominant orange, and I'll say this orange is more like a burnt orange. Hopefully the camera picks it up. If not, maybe in the B-roll, but it's more like a burnt orange, as well as a off color of, well, like an off-white cream color, all right? Material-wise, you have three different materials in particular, primarily leather, you have rubber, and then you have hits of suede, too, as well, all right? Running down this shoe, the standard lacers, you get that that cream off-white color lace that is running down the throat of the shoe. The toe box is a little bit exaggerated. It's not as exaggerated as like a Ramon. If you guys are into those or know about those, or even wear those or anything like that, it's not as exaggerated, but it definitely is compared to a traditional shoe, just not nearly as much, all right? One of the good things I like about Rick Owens is that the construction or quality of the shoe is typically top par. Uh, the stitching is what I'm trying to get at. So except for like one area that I caught out on, I can't remember if this shoe will probably be in the B-roll. I mean, the stitching on the shoe is phenomenal, whether it's on the upper or the midsole or anything like that. Yeah. The stitching is simply always top notch, all right? One of the biggest features of this shoe is on both the lateral and medial aspect of the middle, the upper of the shoe, and that is gonna be this large patch of suede right here, okay? And again, that's one of the big reasons why this is nicknamed the Van Shoe by Rick Owens, all right? Nice quality suede on the side right here and kind of like a weird triangly looking shape. On the back, there is no branding or anything like that, but again, some really good construction of this back heel panel. Got a little bit of a padded ankle collar right here. Moving on down to the midsole, if you ever worn a Rick Owens Ramon or anything like that, you've seen this midsole and even outsole plenty of times, that traditional rubber midsole and outsole. You know the stitching, again, top notch. You see this, you see the shark tooth outsole on the outside of it, Rick Owens branding. So this is indeed mainline too as well, if I didn't mention that, this is from the mainline collection. I think they are going to be making a dark shadow line and I think it's gonna be the entire upper being more of like a suede material, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, typically the mainline shoes, leather, and the dark shadow line is gonna be, you know, suede or cotton or nylon, something like that, right? Well, back to the shoe. 
shark tooth outsole, Rick Owens logo on the bottom, on the back of the tongue, you have your sizing label, you do have some Rick Owens branding on the insole of the shoe too as well, okay? All right, now going, <laughs> I don't know what that was, but anyways, going over sizing with the shoes, I got mine the EU41, and I think it fits me well. Maybe it's a little bit on the extra fitted side, if you will. So I would say if you have a really like wide, big foot, you probably want to go at least true to size, if not up, uh, but for smaller feet, people like I am, I always go down a size for anything luxury fashion wise. And typically Rick Owens mainline shoes run a little bit big also too as well. So that's why I'm kind of like, hey, you, you may be able just to go true to size, okay? But try it on, if it doesn't work out, hopefully you'll be able to return it, but that'll be my recommendation. This 41 though, fits me just well, all right? Now comes the fun part of what I like about my videos. It's gonna be the how to style portion of it and with that being said you guys always know what do i love doing playing with color theory and so what is the complementary color of orange per the color wheel that is going to be the color opposite so that is going to be blue all right so this first fit right here is going to be more of like a, a little bit more of like a casual good night out maybe even a date night potentially how you wear it um, but I think this fit is very, very nice. Also, before I go a little bit further into the how style portion, note, I did try my hardest to actually not do a full-blown like Rick Owens outfit. Actually, I don't even think I wore any other Rick Owens pieces with this, because I do prefer to try and challenge myself and wear things that aren't brand related like that. Because even though you definitely can, I almost wanna say it's a little bit cheating, but hey, I, I just wanted to challenge myself style-wise, okay? so. Back to this first outfit right here. So we have a base white shirt. You know the brand, Essentials Bamboo Cotton. Those shirts go well with everything. You have an Amy Leon Door light blue wash blue jean. On top of that, and of course, like we talked about, blue is complementary to orange. And then wrap it all together, we do have a mohair coat that is vintage from the House of Balenciaga, all right? I think that coat on top of everything has a really chic stylistic approach to everything. I think the size of the pants kind of complements the size of the shoes very well and it's overall kind of a bright fit you know with the wash of the you have the wash of the jeans you have the whiteness of the shirt but it is kind of toned down a little bit with the Balenciaga mohair coat as well as these Rick Owens burnt orange shoes okay so overall I think that fit is again a really nice casual outing you know what i mean and i think it even works out good for a date night but you guys let me know how you guys feel about that fit that's honestly my most favorite one out of these three we're going out but hey we got two more fits to go let's go ahead and jump into the other one so the second fit is a lot more of a cozy type thing there i didn't really think about complementary colors but i did think about what you'll see in nature for example so think about a carrot a lot of times the stalk of a carrot is going to be what green so i wanted to add in some green on this outfit right here so we have the shoes as a base going up from that we have some of my favorite pants the flared cargo pants from Ruben Cone and then on top of that we have well again one of my favorite personal brands out there Amy Leon Dora you guys know I love this crew neck that oatmeal crew neck goes well with almost anything all right and what I like about this fit is that everything is kind of like a little bit of a lower tone if you will, you get that dark foresty green in the pants and then in the shirt, you still kind of have that foresty green in the logos and that oatmeal color is a little bit crunchy, all right? These shoes, depending on the lighting, now you can definitely light these shoes up in really bright lights and they probably look very bright in this video right now, but I'm telling you, it is more of a darker burnt orange color. All right, so I think especially in regular regular lighting, yeah, you're gonna see the pop of the orange because orange in general is gonna be a little poppy, but it is kind of toned down to where I think it blends in with this fit very nicely, all right? We have the width of the crew neck as well as the width of the flare of the cargo pants, which again, complements the a little bit bigger than typical shoe on here. So I think proportion wise, everything works out just fine. Now moving on to the third one, this is the one that is gonna be a little bit more of a experimental one, but 
hey, you miss all the shots you don't take, shoot for the moon, land on Jupiter, all right? This one right here is same concept with the pants. So we have orange in the shoes going up to an olive green and the pants still green. I know it's a different shade than the previous green pants, but it's still a green pant, all right? And moving up above that, we get a little funky. Still aiming the on door, but it's a knitted polo. So this one's gonna be a little bit more aggressive because it is, well, knitted. So you're gonna see a little bit of your body unless you have a shirt underneath, but I'm not really gonna be playing it too because it's whatever, you know, I don't really care like that. And I'm also working out, so we try to show off these gains a little bit, you feel me? But yeah, we have that, uh, this cream knitted polo shirt. And what I tried to do is match that cream a little bit with the kind of creamish tint to the shoe and the laces and the suede patch. So that was the idea behind that one. I'm a little bit cautious about the proportions of, you know, this polo, the tapering of the pants, and then these shoes that may be a little bit too big for what the pants are trying to offer. But honestly, thinking about it too, maybe if I just kind of open the cuff up a little bit, it should be okay. I'll probably, hopefully I did that in the B-roll, but you guys at least see what I'm going for on this one, all right? This one's a little, a little extra showy, a little aggressive, but it's Rick Owens. <laughs> But yeah, that is pretty much going to wrap it up for the how did I style this. Now, as far as my final thoughts of this shoe, again, is this a great shoe? Absolutely. Is this shoe worth the absolute catastrophe? Now, I'm not going to say catastrophe, but was this shoe worth all the hype that this shoe got? Nah, I don't think so, it's especially for the price point. Um, they were quite expensive, very expensive, actually. So. With that being said, if you, and, and I heard these are gonna be restocking quite a bit down the road anyways, the mainline version. So if you did not get these for retail, would I overpay for resale? Absolutely not, all right? I'm still kind of skeptical about buying these for retail, to be honest with you. But like I said, these are not bad shoes whatsoever. If you are really big in luxury fashion and stuff like that, these are gonna be really good everyday shoes. Because I do feel like, at least walking around inside my house, you know, on carpeted floors, comfort-wise, it's really not that bad. Most of the times, luxury shoes, they are not really suited for walking all day in. And so I would probably say, based on what I've been wearing before, these, if not all day, you could probably wear these most the day okay i'll probably check if you guys follow me on instagram you guys can check in with me when i wear these a little bit more you guys can ask me on an update or if you want me to make a whole video about it you guys let me know in the comments down below hey you've been wearing them for a bit how you feel about them you still feel the same are they comfortable etc etc feel free to ask me in the comments below all right but that is gonna do it for today's video i hope you guys did enjoy if you did make sure you guys come and client you do that behind the description down below as well as the notification bell so that you'll be notified of my next appointment. Make sure you guys follow me on Instagram. The handle's at drhayes91. Follow me there for more content. Hope you have a great day. See you next video.